Welcome to the National Real Estate Post NRP Daily. Obviously, we're here with Barry Habib because we got some stuff we got to talk about. But just want to make mention, you guys keep asking me because we brought it up. When is the NREP business lending, the commercial lending uh, uh, company coming out and uh, the product coming out? Just want you to know, uh, it should be February 3rd that you will be able to start signing up for it. Commercial lending made super easy, extremely simple. And let me tell you something. There's bridge loans out there right now for these commercial uh, property owners that are interest only to help them with the COVID pandemic, right? To kind of move them from one out of one loan and into another loan uh, during these trying times. It's going to be a huge opportunity this year. Uh, so you're going to want to stay tuned. It should be February 3rd. Uh, we'll announce it on the show where you can get signed up with NRP Business Lending. So with that, let's move over to Mr. Barry Habib because look, I got, I'm going to bring up my screen here because I saw this story, right? In National Mortgage News. And I thought, I got I to gotta talk to Barry about this. I got to see what Barry thinks. So I'm going to share my screen here. And this is a national mortgage news. And it says here that mortgage rates drop on renewed worries about COVID-19 and the economy. And I thought, really? That's interesting. I'm wondering if that's really the, really the case here, what's going on. So I figured I would call you and say, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, thanks, man. It's good to be here with you. Hope everything's going great. And Listen, I don't think that's changed much. I don't think we've gotten over our fears of COVID and we don't think the economy really has materially changed. So I don't think that's why, but the media oftentimes looks for just whatever reason to justify what happened instead of really looking deep at it. But th this move that we've seen, and it's something that you and I talked about last time, and everybody was forecasting rates to go to the moon, you know that we uh, didn't think that was going to happen. We felt that there would be an opportunity for them to cycle back I think what, what the fear was initially was that a lot of spending and a lot of debt would create inflation. Well, we don't really have inflation still. It's very hard to generate inflation. Now, maybe we get it to perk up a little bit, but the thing that people don't realize is that debt has a long-term downward push on rates. We've seen it everywhere in the world, everywhere through time. China, the UK, Japan, US, France, Italy, Germany, ev everywhere. And what we see happening is the best way to, to kind of explain it is imagine a family wants to buy a car and it's an expensive car and you, know, you could buy something one of two ways, save up the money and buy it or buy it now, get instant gratification and then pay it off. Well, most people decide to buy it now and then take out a loan. So they're paying it off over time. When they initially get that car, it creates economic activity. So the manufacturer, the dealer, the salesperson, and there's economic activity that's good. So. You know, a little bit of a push up in the economy, but what lingers is the loan, the debt. So that family now has whatever, six, eight, nine hundred dollars a month less every month to utilize for economic activity. And when you take a look at what governments do, it's the same. When governments put out all the spending, it does have an initial push. And a lot of that going into, you know, Robin Hood and DraftKings right now. But right. That, that economic stimulus has that initial push. But then, Frank, what happens is that that debt, remember, we're not printing money, we're borrowing money. That debt has a negative effect on economic growth, slower economic growth, lower inflation, lower inflation, lower interest rates. There is one thing is that to get this money, we're borrowing it, right? So we're paying debt on treasuries we're issuing. And those treasuries, the oversupply of them coming to the marketplace would potentially push rates higher. And that's what we kind of saw. But here comes the Fed and they're just monetizing everything anyway. They're doing something you and I talked about not too long ago called yield curve control. It's on the down low. They're not really talking about it. They say they're buying 40 billion in mortgage bonds. They're really buying 100. You can look at the New York Fed site, you'll see it. So when, when the Fed's out there buying all of this debt and monetizing it, it is helping to keep interest rates low. But now I could show you on the chart, Frank. Yeah, let's do it. Technical. Okay, yeah. so here, here's where we are. Once again, now we are... Uh, we're, we're recording this today, uh, so it's going to air when when you you're viewing Friday. This, this is Thursday. Yeah, this is Thursday, the twenty uh, seventh, I think. So it'll be you're seeing it uh, Friday, the twenty eighth, guys. Yeah. So we're we're down a little bit in mortgage bonds. Stock market's flying. The ten year Treasury's up to one hundred five. It had touched the uh, one. But let's take a look at, at at what we've seen happen as mortgage backed security prices drop. This is your rate sheet getting worse. Rates going up. They, they dropped quite a bit here, but then right in the 200-day moving average, we see this three-day pattern. It's called the morning star, and this almost always portends a good move ahead, and that's why we were very patient, and we kind of rode this sucker up, and it's been beautiful. 
you know, stumbled a little bit here, but broke through this ceiling, broke through this ceiling, broke through the ceiling. And then we got caught up here and tangled in this black line. That's the 50 day moving average. This three day pattern, if it closes like this, if you see this red candle come down a little bit more back under the 25 day, I'm going to tell you that as you're watching this Friday, you'll probably see pricing be a little bit worse. If we're able to get back above this 50 day, then as you're watching this Friday, you'll say, okay, well, the market's looking pretty darn good. It's a difficult one to call right now. A lot's going to depend on the stock market. Does the stock market hold on to its gains? I think that mortgage bonds probably falter. If stocks give back their gains throughout most of its session, the remaining session, you'll probably see mortgage bonds recover a little bit here. This is where we are right now. And the 10-year treasury was a similar story. You know, Frank, last time we talked, we said, hey, if we break below 107, it's going to go to one. Tough time getting through it. Once we break below 107, went right to 100, rather. Yeah. 100. And then uh, that 100 level, got a little bounce here. So we'll, we'll probably hit 107 as another ceiling that we'll kind of retest. And it's kind of headed that way right now, almost at 106. So I'd watch 107. We get up above 107. We have the potential with the stock market rally to get up towards you know, 118, 119 on the 10-year treasury. Okay, good to know. And just a uh, correction, guys, today is Thursday the 28th. You would be watching it on Friday the 29th. I said the wrong dates there. Just wanted to fix that. So your thoughts on then going into the next week, et cetera, um, you're going to be optimistically uh, floating at this point or what are your thoughts? Depends on so Friday I, today. I, I'm, right now, we're, we're very, very cautious about it because remember, in the short term, uh, you want to be careful. We, we have opportunities where we want to make smart lock decisions, not based upon you know, wild conjecture, but we want to be safe in making our decisions based upon the opportunity that we have now. Is it better than what we see over the next two or three days? And, and I think that if we lose a little bit more ground, if stocks keep staying on fire, we probably would lean more towards locking um, okay. a, a ahead of this. Um, but if stocks give back their gains and falter and slip, now, I do happen to think that what we could see in the stock market uh, could be a, maybe a big pullback in the not too distant future. That should help bonds. You've been uh, saying it, that for a while. Yeah. Well, I, I so. we, we did see a nice pullback the other day. Yeah. I, I talked about it on our last show because we hit that. So I'll show you one more time where we talked about it. And, and here's why. When we see the stock market here, and I'm going to pull this up for you so you can see it. Right here is where we said we're, we're hitting the ceiling. We see this hanging man. This is candles of hanging man. This is a bearish engulfing pattern. It usually suggests a downward move. We got that, but we had a bounce back today. You know, you got good yeah. earnings from Apple. You get a bounce back. Uh, I think that this level is going to prove to be a little bit difficult to break through. Look, we'll see. No, nobody knows for sure, but I think that that will be a tough level. If we do that, money going to go into the bond market and you see a nice bond rally. But let's 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 we got to monitor this daily so uh any any numbers coming out next week barry that we you're going to keep your eye on that might be big well, swingers yeah well the, the middle of the month um i'm sorry the the first week of the month rather always has the jobs number which which used to be really really important uh but it, the numbers have become so skewed with COVID that we're not seeing the reactions that we normally see occur uh, in the marketplace. A lot of this is going to be driven by the action in the stock market. And when okay. the stock market cools off, then, and then you'll probably see mortgage bonds take another run. All right. Thanks so much for clearing some stuff up for us today, Barry Habib. A pleasure as always, my friend. Thanks. Barry. Appreciate it. Hey, you guys do us a favor. If you have not yet engaged with Barry at MBS Highway to where you get all these updates and lock notifications float notifications everything where you've got your finger on the pulse become an absolute mortgage advisor instead of just a loan officer you got to get connected to barry with mbs if you haven't highway if you haven't already i'm putting the uh, logo down below you can click it and go you can try it for free for a week or two uh but i know you'll never give it up no, nobody does it's just too too valuable so uh if you haven't done it yet do it now so <laughs> With that, thanks so much, brother. Appreciate you being Thank on the you. show again. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. All right. You guys have a good one. Leave your comments down below. Forward, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you later here at the NRP Daily on the National Estate Post. <laughs>